This is the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge. Trap comedy at its finest. Where if you can't slang yourself, you might as well hang yourself. This is also where you can turn yourself into dope and you become the real man. Whoa, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge. Exciting? Live. Yeah, exciting. We got some exciting stuff going on. We got uh, the super host, super co-host, uh, Mr. Jeff Arnold. And we have uh, Farouk, the walking Google. Once again this week, we got everything going on. We want to make sure up top, we want you guys to subscribe to the Mad Marv Comedy Lounge on YouTube. It's free. All you do is press the little red button to say subscribe. Just press it. Boom. And you right in there, you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't be too hard unless you ain't got no fingers. Jeff, what you got going on, man? What's what's happening today? It's been a crazy weekend, man. You know, what's up, Farouk? What's up, Big Jeff? How you doing, man? All right. You all right? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm glad you made it today, man. Thank you, man. You know I'm glad you... all y'all made it. Didn't get shot by the police and nothing like that. Shit, you know what man. I'm saying? Yeah. But you know what the first, you know what day it is though, right? Yeah. What day is it? What day is it? It's Taco and Titty Tuesday. Why do I always forget that? Yeah, why do you forget that? I don't know, because I ain't had no tacos and I ain't had no titties. Oh, okay, that's why. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah, that's what's happening. Well, you know, the two uh, is the combination. The most sexist and racist day of the week. Yeah, well, you know. Taco man. and Titty Tuesday. I like that. I don't know. I think that uh that weekend was pretty racist, too, though. Oh, my God. Sunday, we back at it, man. Niggas want they block back. Man, what uh, happened this time? Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, man. Sunday, um, three officers lost their lives. Isn't that where uh, Lil Wayne is from, uh, Louisiana? No. Mm-hmm. He's from New Orleans. Louisiana. The, the, is in New Orleans in Louisiana? Yeah. So he, he is from Louisiana. No, uh, he's New from, Orleans. yeah, New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans. Yeah, yeah New, New Orleans. Orleans. Isn't that in the uh, state of Louisiana? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Okay. You know, Are you checking your great geographical? No, I'm just checking y'all remedial motherfuckers today. <laughs> oh, I, motherfucker. I know it's in the state, I know it, Yeah, I'm just okay. telling you this little Wayne is from a city. different place. Yeah, I was giving you the city. No. Are you from Compton, Marr? No. So if somebody said, oh, Mar- Mad Marv from Compton, you go check them, right? I mean, if they say Mad Marv live in California, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to say yeah, because, you know. But you're not from Compton, though? South no. Central? No, no. Inglewood? No, I'm, I'm, from, I'm from everywhere around here. We was broke, so we had to go where the rent was cheap. You know <laughs> <laughs> so y'all just moved around. Y'all was just uh, yeah, I'm gypsies. From a, I'm from the uh, low rent district. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, so that's what happened Sunday, man. Um, another shooting. Um, three officers lost their lives. Um, a six. Um, they, actually, he shot six officers. Three of them um, died. Did they catch the uh, shooter this time? Oh, they, they, you Killed know, him. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't blow him up? Nope. Okay. Shot him dead. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. I don't understand, man. It's, it's going down. And like I, like I said What well, don't before, you understand? I don't understand why, why people can't just start understanding that, uh, that we're being hunted. I mean, how many, how many more people got to lose their lives where they say, hey, it's a target on your back? I mean, you know, it's real now. Yeah, actually, it was a couple of black officers who lost their life, too. Yeah. But, it, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's to the point now where it's just like us against them. Yeah. There's no color barrier no more. Well, at least you know now when they say, you know, when they shoot a, 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 a black person, you know what I'm saying, they say they fit the description, you know that is true. Well. Okay. If you notice in both of these shooters that uh, both of the last shooters were both uh, ex-military persons. Yep. Marines, yeah. military but, but still, trained. Still, the, the victims uh, match the description because when you go to a gun range, the uh, the target that they're shooting it's is black. black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you're going to always fit that description. And the target also is just the upper torso. Yeah, so don't be asking why they didn't shoot him in the leg and shoot him in the arm because, you know, they ain't practicing They're not that. trained that. They're not trained to do that. Right. So, so, you know, fit the description. Yeah. Yeah. So, so get some bleach. Bleach your skin. Oh, wow. We going there? Yeah. Bleach your skin if you want to live. That's what's up. So that's You still get shot. Yeah, so that's what happened. So are y'all following the protocol? What's the protocol? Um, two hands on the steering wheel. 
Oh, I keep my two hands on the steering wheel. I don't put my hands on the steering wheel. I stick my goddamn hands out the okay. window. I keep them on the steering wheel even if I ain't driving. I, I keep the motherfuckers on there even from the passenger side. No, nah, but right? really, you know what I do? I just keep my window rolled up, crack. I just slap, you know, give my notification, man, and that's it. Just enough know? just enough for that window to be cracked. If they say anything smart and aggressive, I just tell them to call their field sergeant out, you know, but I'm not going to be an <laughs> asshole about doing it. Oh, no, no. See, but that's a conflict with anybody. If you notice, like, if you get into any disagreement and have a disruptive uh, dialogue with somebody, right? the more calmer you get, you can kind of, like, downplay the situation. Be escalated, yeah. Know? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, if you start getting engaged with them, then it becomes a lot worse for things. So, Jeff, if you're playing Ice Cube music and the police get behind you, do you switch to classical or you just uh, keep no, that just Ice keep Cube? playing it, yeah. Uh-huh. See, yeah. Your, your days are numbered. <laughs> they numbered anyway, shit, you know? Pretty much. You know, so, I mean, I done lived a great life. So, I mean, you know, I done had great things happen to me. You know, my son, you know, the Bulls won, the Bears won. Bulls won when? I saw it. Got, I That's got in live, his lifetime. I got to live to see Barack Obama become the first black president. You sound like, like you, 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 you sound like you utilizing for your damn I self now, Jeff. Now all I got to do is... Utilizing? You know what? But I, I was talking to this guy. I said that right. I was said utilizing. No, that's what you said. <laughs> well, no, I, I was talking to this guy and I told him, you know, he's like, he said, you don't live, you know, you don't look a day like 53. And I was like, thanks. And I was like, well, you know what? If God calls me tomorrow, I'm ready to go. That's a good way to say yeah, and I was like, you know, because I've witnessed great things in my life. The birth of my son, yeah. you know, um, the Barack Obama becoming the president, seeing two terms, serving two terms. Man landing on the, the, the computers and shit on Mars. On that, and I said, you know, the only thing that I need, the only feat left for me to witness is the Cubs win the World Series. <laughs> and you know what he told me? He's like, well, motherfucker, you're going to live another 50 years. Yeah, that's all right, <laughs> Jeff. They ain't going to win it, you know, again. I was like, that's, well, all that's right. you know, but it's all good, though, You could be the oldest motherfucker at the ballpark exactly. that day, Jeff. Because that's exactly. cool. That's cool. You don't look, you know, you know, you don't look 53. You don't look a day nah, over 55. Man, you know, drama-free, stress-free life, man. That's what's up. So have you been taking advantage of your senior discounts? Always. AARP, mm-hmm. AAA. You know, if I go on a hot date, you know, I'm not afraid to pull out that ARP car. How, how much it costs to get in uh, the movies for you? Uh, free. Free? How yeah. you do that? Because I'm with the DGA player, Directors Guild of America. Oh, excuse me. So okay. I don't have to pay. <laughs> you know, so we go there. I, I pull out my was, car for that and be like, bam, I get a guess. I thought that was the Dirty Geezers Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, it, it, it could be for that, too. So I pull out that, be like, bam, then we go to dinner. And then I, you know, I ain't afraid to go to that senior citizen menu where you get half do off. You, do you really have to uh, eat off the senior menu? Uh, can you just get some? Yeah, because the senior citizen. would and still get the discount. No, you know, well, I mean, you know, because I'm watching everything I put in my body now. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's so a lot. So, eat a lot of tilapia and. and, and no, nah, I can't eat fish anymore, man. So, oh, so what, know. you just eat grapes and, and the oatmeal? No, I just, you know. Salads, mm-hmm. a lot of green. I had a chili cheese tomato earlier. With, oh, really? Uh, with some crackers. And all your system is just fucked up. No, nah, you know, system. Not it, yet. No, nah, because see, I know I know how to uh, take a proper number two. You know what I'm saying? I got a squatty potty. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, so my, my shit come out like ice cream. Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it do, man. Did you guys watch the uh, the uh, Republican uh, party last night? Yeah, this we week? watched it last night, man. Did, did you enjoy yourself? Did you sit down with some of your oatmeal and, and tilapia and uh, enjoy it? Man, that shit is crazy, man. I mean, they really tried to bum rush the floor and knock out Donald Trump. Mm. They tried to have a, a, a vote to disallow him from um, becoming the, you know, the Republican nominee, and they, um, they failed. Well, so they tonight, don't... he was officially named the Republican nominee. Cool. For president of the United States. But, hey, you ever notice outside the rally how many people was around there bearing with, arms? Yeah, with, with the, the guns. guns and yeah, because they got an open gun, um, um, open um, gun carry um, law policy. Oh, in Cleveland. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you saw those white guys with the AR-15, the AK-47s. Yeah. I mean, walking right past the police. Yeah, but just in itself, I thought it was a beautiful thing as far as like people showing and uh, they seeing the effect the right to bear arms. You know. That's what that was about, but in that state, they said they didn't even care if you had license or non-license. Really? Yeah, that day specifically, they said, you know. Well, no, the police, Fraternal um, Order Police, wrote a letter to um, um, Governor Kasich, who, was run, who ran for president, mm-hmm. um, but he lost. 
Um, and then they asked that he banned for the week, you know, that you couldn't carry um, your gun um, openly in public. But he said, I'm not going against the second, you know. Right, The right. law was like, we established the law, and he said, you know, I'm not going to change it just for this one week. He's like, you know, they have the second, you know, amendment constitutional right. Right, and right. And they out there, and they doing it. I mean, I saw two brothers out there. You know, they had their AK-47. So I was just like, wow, okay. You know, so. Well, I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think the, the rally was cool, just, lo just as long as you don't let uh, Trump's wife speak no more. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they... They want to they want to steal everything from black people oh, anyway. Man, now now we've seen her uh, yeah. steal uh, Michelle's speech. Plagiarism, man. Yeah, she um, she also wrote "I Have a Dream" by Martin Luther King. She might have uh, wear cornrows next week. She, she might, man. Who knows? I mean, that was a damn shame. That was just blade up, thing, you know, thievery. <laughs> I mean, just like goddamn. I don't really think she um, knew herself. You know, it was rough for her. I think that the writers of that. Fucked up, you know, the people who wrote the speech for it messed nobody up. Nobody got fired today. Trump said he wasn't firing nobody. He said it was a beautiful speech. Everybody it says it's a beautiful that. speech. Yeah, it was about my wife. Um, you know, the last minute, a couple of writers came in, and they just gathered information from her. She sounds like a Dracula, though. I'm, I'm, I'm worried no. about her. Why? Where's she? She Colombian? Where's she from? She's from Slovenia. Slovenia? Ain't that Slovenia. up the street from where, uh, where Dracula That's was born? Euro. Yeah. That's, that's off the street where, uh, where Dracula was born in. No. Sound, sound damn close. Transylvania. Ain't that up the street? Yeah. Yeah. So Around the corner, down yeah. the block. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like. Close uh, to Romania. Like yeah. the difference between uh, New Orleans and Baton Rouge. Something no. like that. <laughs> across, across the border. They're going to yeah. build a border. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so what, is the, what is the candidacy candidacy looking like as far as your choice, uh, Jeff? I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I'm, I, I, I may not vote. I'm thinking about doing like a Two Face from Batman. I'm gonna just flip a coin. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that? I mean, because I think you know. You gotta choose between one of the two lesser evils. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you do. You, <laughs> it's basically. Ain't no such thing. Yeah, girl. man. Oh, it's a two headed snake, man. It's just like, you know, because, I mean. They different yeah, wings of the same dirty ass yeah, bird. If, Mark if, my word. After this election, these two people just finished, you know, out there blatantly disrespected one another. Go end up doing business or something later on in two more years, like whoever get in the White House. But, but didn't, didn't Hillary and, and Bill go to uh, Donald's and uh, Vanya's uh, wedding? Yeah. They, they were sitting were there right eating the hors d'oeuvres and all that shit. All that. I mean, but, you know, when it comes to politics. I think all this shit is staged, if you ask me. Hey, man, you know what? It might be. It just might be. But, I mean, we fucked either way. We get either one of them. So, we fucked. I mean. I'm like, voting for God. And guns. That's what I'm voting for. It's like, the, remember the late, great comedian Rodney Winfield? Yeah. It's like, this shit, you know, the president, it don't affect my life at all. Right. As long as, long as they don't drop the EBT it don't, uh, budget, yeah, cool. it don't affect my life at all, you know, because, you know, I don't know nobody in Syria. I'm never going to visit, you know, so the foreign policy, you know, they worrying about... You know, you watch the white mass media and everybody's worrying about ISIS, ISIS. They created you know, But they say, you know, what about what is the president doing? I'm like, fuck ISIS. We got the police. They are ISIS. You know, the police are terrorists in the black community. So I'm more worried about the police than I'm, you know, ISIS. Now, I do worry about that, though. And that's real. What's that? If, if it's ice is it, my uh, drink when, I, when I'm drinking. Oh, OK. All yeah. right. With the ice. You know, a yeah. lot of people, man, you know, they complain about the pe police uh, patrolling their community, but the, these same given groups of people that complain about the police don't want to become police themselves to police their community. So, right. you know, you don't really have too much room to be complaining about shit when you don't want to be a part of the chain. Now, for instance, when you look in the uh, the ranks of the up-and-coming uh uh, deputy cadets and the police cadets, you know, like the new young people that's going right. to be peace officers. Right. You see a lot of Hispanics because that's the express a turn to the demographics of the city. OK, now you see Hispanics everywhere now, you know, so they get these jobs in order to help their people and better police the community because they can relate to the people and they want to help, you know, they uh Uncles bring that good cocaine over here from Mexico also. Well, right. what, what was you talking about earlier uh, this week? I know you was talking about, you was mentioning how how people don't understand that that 
the police and the white man can do whatever he wants to do with his property. And as long as, as long as black people continue to remain in that position of being property, you know, why complain about it? Yeah, that's what I say. What I mean is having like a, a slave mentality or a mentality like a child, you always need somebody to tell you what to do, you know. If a person ain't go treat you right, he most definitely won't teach you right. So if you don't look for knowledge of yourself to try to educate yourself, for one, on the law, Number two, on the description of a peace officer in order to let him know in a good manner when he's out of bounds, then you lose. And like I said, you know, you got to stop looking at these people who are not even cops. All these are is redneck white boys who really hate you. They go to the big city and get uniforms for a license to kill and mistreat you for the simple fact that they look at us all like savages the way that we treat each other, you know. There was a brother, I just seen a right, bulletin totally agree, today, yeah. that uh, was killed this past January walking up uh, 54th Street, 21 years old. Right. Bulletin uh, for $50,000 for people who know any uh, information. Now, this young man was killed in the daytime, and 54th is a busy street. Right. So he was shot multiple times, and, you know, people seen the shooter, but, but he but mysteriously— it Yeah, but it wasn't no nobody video taping no, on no, that, though. But didn't nobody get no description of none of that. So somebody knows exactly. personally the person or the individual that's not the, pol that does not the racist police, that's right. not uh, ISIS or no terrorist group, but an uh, individual that lives within the community that destroys the life of other people that look like him in the community. Everybody knows him. And I'm sure he could use the, uh, that 50000 now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but my point is this. So why does somebody have to <clears throat> get ransom in order for us in the community to do what's right? You know, it's not about... Because uh, they got the street code. Yeah. Uh, be well, we got the street code, but... You don't know the fucking penal code. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> exactly. Okay, you know the street code. You don't say shit. But when you get your ass in courtroom or in the police handcuffs, you're running your goddamn mouths too much. And, you know, it's a bunch of snitching out here, too. So why is it that you have a street code when it's the destruction of a black life? It could be a little girl, your grandmama, sister. You know, I lost yeah, I, lo I lost no my first cousin to gang violence. Right. She was shot in the head a couple of years ago, you know. Okay. 34 years old. So my thing is, these same two people are still at large, you know what I'm saying? Wow. The police investigating the case said they got a real strong good idea who on who it? these two people did, Wait, but nobody is coming out as a witness to testify or say anything against them. Right. right. Now, I don't advocate, you know, you mad at somebody, uh, whatever, you know, people doing their thing, you just outright calling the police, just blowing the whistle on people. But what I'm talking about is in the sense that it matters when a cop kills us in our community. You have to realize that they, even if they racist or not, they're human beings, okay? They're coming to work in a hostile, savage environment. So, of course, they're going to be on guard and antsy to kill before anything because they already scared. Right. Okay, so secondly, if we as men pay more attention to these young brothers out here and see them, uh, out of place. And Jeff, I know you remember this, you know, you and your partners be doing something wrong. It'd be a wino or any older man that was older than you tell you, look here, youngster, y'all got to get your asses out of here or don't y'all need to be home. Even if you was drinking, they'd tell you, you can't be around here, youngster. Y'all put that up and go somewhere by yourself. So what I'm saying is it was a call to a uh, 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 that's when it took a village to raise a child. Yeah, but this Everybody. is what we need to get back to. Okay. We got to stop turning our backs on the youth. Now, when you're talking to these zombies out here and these <laughs> dead-minded people, okay? Right, right. That's what I call them, too. Like Lemur Park, a nice area, but the park in itself has turned into a village of the damned. <laughs> you know? I see homeless people. I seen people with uh, office chairs with wheels on it, right. barbecue grills. and wow. I wonder how they getting all this shit. You homeless, but you a hoarder. You got nine damn bikes, a rice cooker, seven baskets. and a barbecue grill. Seven baskets. Yeah. And you out there doing your thing. <laughs> man, I seen a brother in Lemur Park, man, with a crow sitting on his goddamn lap. Wow. That's fucked up. He had a crow sitting on his lap. He stuck his finger out the damn crow, jumped on his finger, got on his damn shoulders, and just... Posted up on that motherfucker. Yeah. 
Then I seen this other uh, homeless dude playing the goddamn accordion. How many niggas you know play an accordion? I don't know one of them that play the accordion. He's playing that motherfucker in the Park. In the Park. Park, the village of the damn. <laughs> wow. Okay. I don't like it because <clears throat> when I see that, it's like we giving up. Okay? They take showers in that fountain, don't they? Yeah, baths. In the summertime, I seen this uh, drunk-ass white woman in there with her bathing suit on. Oh, I see Got that. on the ground. She was sunbathing. Yeah. By the fountain at Lemur Park. Told me she was trying out for Baywatch. Yeah. I seen that lady. She had a tall can of 211, too. <laughs> what y'all think of this, what you call it, man? This Pokemon craze. Oh, well, you know, uh, watch your mouth. I, I, uh, you I, play that? I found three of them today. Did you really? Boy, I need to cut that shit out. And for the rest of y'all out there in America, if you a grown ass man and you ain't even got no goddamn job, but you running around these goddamn streets playing Pokemon, somebody need to slap the shit out of you so you can wake <laughs> your ass up. Fuck Pokemon. I, I found that, two of them. They, in the they, shop. they come up with all these Bullshit. different shit yeah. to distract your ass on what's really going on. Now, what's gonna happen when your ass is out here, Mr. Grown Man, playing Pokemon, looking for Pokemon? And you surrounded by international troops from the U.N. and they gun your ass down. You don't know your ass is being set up. Get your shit together. Look, check this shit out. So you play it. Do I play it? Yeah. Boy, do I. Man, what the fuck, yo? Like, Marv had me trying to do that shit. He's like, take my phone, Farouk. Follow the arrow. And I see the arrow, and it's going outside the door, sticking in the trash can. I turned around and gave him that shit back. Man, I'm not looking in no tra damn trash that can. Nigga, for he was scared to look at that motherfucking trash can. That's the thing. He went on, he peeked in that motherfucker. So what the fuck are you getting out of it, though? Poke you, get, you get Pokemon out of that motherfucker. You get him. You catch the motherfucker. And then once shop. you catch the motherfucker, what you do with them? You collect them, bitches. You got to collect all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all in my club on July 29th uh, at the Mad Marv Comedy So Lounge is there Live. any monetary gain from this shit? Uh, it will when y'all come to the club and you come to the show on July 29th at 830. But your broke uh, motherfuckers they, they playing gonna, Pokemon nah, Go. They're going to come into the club and y'all catch them. I got Pikachu, Jigglypuff. I got all of them in the club. Come on in there. Plus I got tacos too. So you can get some Pokemon, some tacos, and some jokes on July 29th at 4305. Degnan Boulevard in Lamert Park. Be there, be square. At the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center. Oh, yeah. And you know this. You know, so so you caught two today? I caught two of them today. All right. And mm -hmm. now where do you go from there? Then you go to the gym. You go to the gym and you train them, you know, because they got a gym right over there in Lamert Park. You can train your Pokemon for battle. So if you're going to battle some people, you know, you want to get your Pokemon up tight, you know, get the muscles and everything. You don't want to fight nobody with a weak-ass Pokemon. They don't take your Pokemon. You'll be fucked up. So you got to go train the motherfucker. Get his shit together. And you going to do all that? Am I going to do it? Yeah. Or am I doing this shit? Are you doing it? I'm Are you training it. them? Look, part of How are you going to train <laughs> fictitious Pokemon and you ain't even in shape, motherfucker? In a, in a fictitious gym. So this is what I'm saying. Wow. Look, this but <laughs> it, it has been some serious shit. John. It's been some serious shit going on. Like, look. Like what? Homeboy, partner of mine, his girlfriend found him at his uh, ex-girlfriend's house and, uh, and, and they was getting down, right? With a Pokemon in his ass? Uh, God, God, I don't know God. if it went that far, God, but it, it was a good excuse because she was like, what the fuck you doing over to this bitch house? And, and he was like, well, you know, it's a, it was Pokemon over here. He was getting Pokemon out of there, out of her house. So <laughs> she believed it because they both played together and then they traded the Pokemon and went home happily ever after. And nobody got their ass whooped and we lost no black lives that night. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Pokemon can save your life. You know See, what I'm saying? Black people, we got to stop <clears throat> that shit. You know somebody got killed playing that too, right? Somebody got robbed too. Yeah. yeah. But, but you know, they, they, they didn't one woman found a dead body. Yeah, that's because her battery went uh, dead. The, the one that got killed, you know, you got to make sure. Number one, when you're playing Pokemon, make sure your shit is fully charged. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers ain't got shit better yeah. to do. <laughs> I'm telling you, make sure that Get a real like, life, like, yeah, people. Get a real boy, life, this man. This is unemployed motherfuckers <laughs> playing this no, shit. No, it's, it's, it's getting people out the house because that, that's better than them sitting at the house crushing candies and jamming cookies. You know what I'm saying? Get them out the house to do what? Just chase fictitious shit around? Hey, long as you get your motherfucking They at the house out. doing what? Uh, crushing uh, cookies. and I mean, jamming cookies and crushing candy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fuck uh. they do. Candy crush, cookie jam. They sit on that shit. <laughs> oh, God, get your ass out the house. You know what I'm saying? Shit. And that's what the... And Pokemon will get your ass out the house. Yeah, I seen people walking Somebody back. got hit by a bus or a car playing Pokemon. Yeah, get too. your ass. Pokemon gonna get you I mean, fucked up. I mean, shit. I mean, you got to pay attention. I seen people walking down 103rd and Great in the middle of the night looking for Pokemon. Oh, Pokemon go to Compton? Guess what? Pokemon is everywhere, I'm telling you.
Wow. And it's a good excuse too if you argue with your girl and you just walk out the house. Oh, you just gonna go walk get... out the house? You just gonna walk away? Nah, I'm going to chase Pokemon. Nah, bitch, I gotta find Jigglypuff. And he no, normally he gonna be at the liquor store, so you can get Jigglypuff. Puff, and oh, he a drunk. Yeah. Oh, okay. They got All drunk right. Pokemon too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh huh. You know how they used to look for the slit small liquor bull? Right. Fuck it. Get a Pokemon. Get a Pokemon. <laughs> 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 All right, player. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and when does the game end? Does it end? Uh, hopefully it'll never end. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so it continues. No, this, this is what the other people are doing. See, they hide the Pokemon in like the museums and the mall. So you can't just walk in a museum for free. You got to pay well, okay, at the I'm, door. Okay. So who hides the Pokemon? Whoever made the app up. And they go out and just hide it? They just put them on in there, and then you go to GPS, and then you, you like, say we... Let me see if it's some of the motherfuckers in here. It's probably some in here, but I'll get them after the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Right. I went, they I like was, roaches and I shit, I was huh? looking for a Pokemon one time and found this bum and shit. Oh, okay. And I was like, this motherfucker okay. is He was not, a Pokemon. No, he was not. And I was like, this is... This fuck. I started shaking my phone. <laughs> shaking my phone. Like, this is some bullshit. Oh, my God. You know, that's fucking Ralph right okay. there. You know what I'm saying? He been in the so you don't play it, huh? No, I don't have time for that shit, man. No, actually, I get free entertainment. Like the nigga with the dirty feet to sell the sheets and shit. Oh, my wow. God. This, Look, dude, this dude came into the shop. That's a reality. He show. sell everything. Brand that, new no, he ninjas, sell everything that's everything. clean. Yeah. He sell clean shit like bedding, clean bedding. Everything. Uh, uh, he give you supplies. thousand count sheets, yeah. comforters, everything. Dirty and shit. Dirty? This nigga's feet dirty, is black. Man. They wow. look like leather socks. I can even put no shoes on. You can't put no Girl. shoes on the motherfucker. He wear flip flops, and I don't understand how he get away with stealing all this shit. I looked at the motherfuckers. Yeah, I said, did they, "Do your feet?" I asked him, "What he do?" All the nigga go tell me is, uh, "I just be coming up." Yeah, nigga, I'm the come up man. He steal everything except for socks. This motherfucker's feet, nigga. I'll be is, right he back, up, man. I'm I'll be right you. back. I'm gonna come up. What you need? You always got one of them in the, in the hood. Yeah, I don't. I don't think. Shop. I don't think he could uh, ever get them feet clean. Well, shit. Chase Pokemon. Yeah, he yeah. can. He got to boil that uh, that water. He got to boil that water under a blue flame. You know a blue flame <laughs> is hotter than a regular flame. You know, you know? get a scour pad. Yeah, he got to stick them motherfuckers in that boiling hot ass water, wow, man. Did, did you yeah. smell? Did you smell that nigga last time he came to the shop? Yeah. Man, me that funky? What? Wow. And you what? let him in the Look, shop? Put it yeah. this way. Funky mind. He smells so bad, he'll scare flies off his shit. Oh, man. That's how bad he smells. That's bad. But, hey, he got some good-ass sheets for a good-ass price. You know, flies like shit, you know? Oh, yeah. Flies come close to him. They buzz their ass back. <laughs> what else? They got to back shit? up. He sells he sheets. He sells... Uh, uh, blenders, he, 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 blenders like knife sets, wants, uh, George Foreman grill, yeah, uh, oh, that's uh, panini bread makers. You know the little panini yeah, sandwiches, yeah, 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 the presser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He sell uh, all that, that shit, yeah. man. Magic bullets, you get, you get the magic bullet, the blenders and shit. Yeah, the the ninja yeah. food processor. Oh, okay, everything. Uh, <laughs> I got a water maker. pick yeah, from his ass yeah. too, from a tea, for yeah. water pick. Uh, he got a massage foot uh, bucket. He ain't sold one of them yet. The one the I don't think he. Those. I don't think he's interested in anything that got to do with feet because he neglect <laughs> the fuck out of here. He don't go. He don't I go. Swear he, don't, to God. he don't sell them, them uh, foot massages. He don't sell no socks. He don't sell anything from the uh, ah. kneecap down. Fucking motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he smell like a Russian must rack too. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, but these are the type of people that hang around the Murray Park. I mean, so. Uh, I don't know what we gonna do about it, but you know, as long as they we come, got a fake ass musician. That gets on everybody' goddamn nerves to wear blouses and shit all the time. Is that, is, is that the guy to be in the back of the shop with the saxophone? Yeah, he don't wear shirts. He wear blouses. Yeah, he don't. He don't know that it's, it's man actually, blouses. Man blouses. blouses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they real silky. And he plays yeah. saxophone. Flowers and shit all on it. Oh man, you know, yeah. What kind of motherfucking barbershop y'all running? Hey man, that's that's what happened at the barbershop. Everything happened in the barbershop. Uh, somebody got killed in the barbershop. Uh, yeah, now like, yeah, yeah, they came. Shit, up. somebody got ran out the damn barbershop on the block, not where we at, but on the block. Nigga yeah. talking shit, got ran out with the gun. You know, where was the Black Lives Matter then? Yeah, so a lot, a lot of things happen in the barbershop that won't happen in uh in the normal area. I know I've been on Crenshaw for over twenty years, and at least every year, one time every year, is this lady that comes by. She's butt naked, and she she picks uh. A, a different shop every year to sit in front of it and just take a butt naked shit. It's just whatever. Oh, she take a butt naked shit? Butt yeah, naked when shit. I was in the millennium, she walked to the middle of the millennium and took a piss. Then got up and told everybody, 
I don't know what the fuck y'all looking at and walked out. Yeah, right. Wow. So if you get lucky enough to get her to come shit in your shop, it's usually uh, good luck for that shop. Oh, it is? Usually. Okay. She's like a ghetto leprechaun. <laughs> Asshole naked. <laughs> But you know when people when people uh, do those naked streaks, why are they never uh, no fine motherfucker? Why is always somebody beat the fuck up? Beat the fuck up! Totally. Yeah, we got all kind of dookie monsters and everything around there, man. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but then you know you can get get all. Does your anybody food. get their fucking haircut though? Uh, oh yeah, you shit, get your man! I'll stay. Busy. All this shit, all this shit going Why's on, going on because it's like a reality show, but it's live. So it's, it's like a reality play. You see what I'm saying? That's what we do. It's like a reality play. I'm so glad I cut my own motherfucking hair. Well, that's cool. We're about to go to break, and uh, this segment was brought to you by the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Theater, 4305 Degnan, in the heart of Lamert Park. And we have, uh, we want you guys to come on down. We have a very special show on July 29th. It's going to be uh, outstanding. So if you want to chime in on the conversation, please hit us up at 323-293-3375. And we'll be right back. Man, what kind of mother... Okay, uh, we're back. We're back. Already? Uh, already. Uh, already. Wow. We're back. We're back right now. And uh, we're still talking about the what was going on in uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. The, the Baton Rouge. Yeah, we we back to reality now. Yeah, home of home of not the Pokey, delicious, man. home of the delicious uh, po' boys and gumbo. They got a, a Popeyes out there that's two stories. I mean, it's it's so nice. They you sell see it. crawfish in it. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, I know. They it sell is. crawfish in that Popeyes. They sell yes. everything. They sell gumbo in that Popeyes. It's, it's, it's really delicious. It's off the chain. I, I can't <laughs> get with the crawfish, though, man. I just can't do it. They already take the heads off and everything, put it in a nice thing for you, so you ain't really got to do nothing to them. You just, you just, just you smash don't like them. crawfish? That's too much goddamn work for that little bitty-ass morsel of meat, man. Oh, nah. man. I mean, don't you, don't you eat sunflower seeds? That's different. Why is it? It's less because it's one. I'm a pro. I just one pop, spit, and I chew on the seed. They got people, that crawfish. You got it. It's just too much and a little bitty pass. They got on, people man. in Louisiana that will pop that crawfish faster than you pop a peck policy. You know what I'm saying? And they also they also got zombies down there. That's why I don't really go. But they call them down there mud bugs. Mud bugs, yeah. But they got real zombies down there too. So uh, they got real zombies out here. Uh, yeah, yeah, Apparently, I, at the barber shop. Yeah, at the Lamar yeah, Park. Around, everywhere, I, man. I've, I've actually seen them make a zombie uh, when I was in Louisiana one time, with my own eyes. I saw them do it. Sure did. That's why I'm fucking with them. Okay. They got zombie makers down there, motherfucker. Oh, all right. I'm not bullshit. Well, I mean, I, I believe you. that I, I can believe that because shit, I got magical powers too. I turn motherfuckers into trees every day. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> man, I, I mean, you, you whatever you, tree they want to be, I turn their ass into a tree. tree. See, you guys see, y'all want to laugh at me and everything till you go down to Louisiana. You see that motherfucker turn that uh, that, that, that boy into a zombie yourself, and then you go come back and be like, goddamn, Mark, you was not lying. This ain't no bullshit, and I'm staying in the house. I'm Pokemon is turning people into zombies, more Television. No, it's walking zombies. You're getting outside the house. So anything to get you out the house and into my club is all right with me. I don't yeah. care. You come to the club, you pay to get in there, you laugh, and you can do whatever the hell you want to do. You can turn your ass back into a tree or whatever the fuck you want to do when take you get your, up out of here. Take your Pokemon and take get on. And get on. Get the fuck <laughs> up out of here. So th- what y'all think about Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, the neurosurgeon, the brain surgeon? Well, I think he, uh, he he had a better choice in in, in college mas- uh, uh, majors than than you did, because instead of going for hotel management, he he went to do uh, brain surgery. Brain surgery. So, yeah, so I think that was cool. You think he stabbed his mom? Hell yeah. With a knife? Yeah, yeah, I did. Cause he probably stabbed her with surgical precision. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
She probably was talking shit. Cause see, nobody don't be. I'm just telling you, nobody don't want to be policed all the time. When you gonna do this? Take out this. Do this. Do this. Shut the fuck up. You dig what I'm saying? So, uh, so he's voting for Trump. You know, Omarosa. Well, he ain't got her? no choice. He ain't remember? got no choice. Yeah, I remember Omarosa. Yeah, she used to work for the Clintons. She said she's going to campaign for black folks to vote for Trump. She used to work. So for she's gonna the go Clinton. around delivering Popeyes chickens to niggas. Popeyes. Yeah. Hey, to get them to vote for uh, Donald Trump. Yo. Whatever it takes. You know niggas don't turn down chicken too much, Joe. It's a free chicken? Come the on, vote? Man. Come on, man. Well, I mean, if Popeyes it's wings, out there. if it's wings, she might have my vote. That's what I'm saying. And then stop off at churches and give me some of them uh, damn apple pies. Them bastards is good. Oh, you like what, that? Yeah, what <laughs> What was going on with the guy who... Uh, who shot up in, uh, in in Baton Rouge? I mean, what well, was they his say background? He was, Anybody know his background? Yeah, was, he said um, Gavin Long is his name. Gavin. Gavin Long. That's where he fucked up already. Yeah. You name your then, son Gavin. What but the fuck then is he, that? he was an outsider because he was from Kansas City. And his name was so, Gavin. That's why yeah, nobody. So he came with. into Baton Rouge. Um, Gavin, what the fuck? Did what he did, but then they say he was also affiliated or associated with the Morris Science Temple of America. Did he wear the fez and shit? No, I don't know. Mm. He, yeah, he had the fatigues on. He had black. No, the fez. When 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 uh, I I noticed they wear fezes, they look like Morocco mold from the cartoon and shit. And they also take it off and put popcorn in it when they eat move, watching the movies and shit. It's no, I, don't, I, I, I didn't I didn't know all that. Do you know anything about uh, more science people or anything? Yes, I do. What do you know about? They were founded in 1913, bro. This not a book. 1912, report. Jeff. It's not a, it's not in 1918. a book report. This okay. is not a book report. I'll go get the book. They was founded in 1912. By who? Established by Timothy Drew, who later on became known as Drew Ali. Normal Drew Ali, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I know and everything they, about and it. And then they moved where? They moved to the Shy Town. Thank you. Okay, so you should have knew that. I told you where they originated from. I know everything I knew about where that. They originated Timothy from. Drew was born on the uh, Indian Reservation in North right. Carolina. Right. Okay. He that's was exposed all, to Islam by uh, a Muslim Indian dude with the Amadeus movement. Right. That's who exposed him to Islam. Okay. Okay, your turn. What else do you know about him? The man, yo, he got me on that one. That's it? That's all you know about the motherfucker? Yeah, that's all I need to know. But a lot of people can be associated Not with any about. organization. I don't think that actually any one individual really expressed the, uh, the principles or the whole or everybody from a community or any given group. You know, that's just like the D.C. sniper. They said he was a member of the nation. Right, but he wasn't. But yeah, that, I know, but I'm just saying, when you but put something to, yeah, out there... Yeah, they try to associate yeah, you with it. When you put something it, out there, is, yeah. people don't research to say if he was or not. If right. they hear it in the media, they take it right. as gospel. Yeah. So they, well, he was associated right. with that. That's, that's just like saying. So I don't think his acts associated with the, uh, the, the Morris uh Had, they, had a temple. connection. That's what I'm saying. Because like, they don't do that. You know, they might. Uh, well, no, he stated in his. They face- might steal some oh, property wait. or do some swindling shit like that. But no, they he not stated go. in his Facebook post that, you know, he, you know, this has nothing to do you know, with the Morris Science yeah. Temple. It has nothing to do with this is what I'm doing. Yeah. He was a member he was a member of Facebook as as well, right? Yeah. And he's like, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing this because of what the police did. So why they didn't make the connection with, with, with uh Facebook uh with the killings? What do you mean? Like why didn't it say because he was a member of Facebook, he was starting a Facebook movement to do it. And, you know what I'm saying? Well no, he wasn't. He just said this is he's doing he's committing an individual act himself. Okay. So he's going out there doing it. He's not associating himself with it. This is something that he chose to do. Mm-hmm. So he just woke up in the morning and said, This is what I'm gonna on do. On his birthday, twenty nine years old. Yeah, I think what's going on uh the world abroad and also uh here in America, man, is just uh, uh just a result of the uh, Fail both foreign and domestic policies of a, a, a raggedy ass governmental structure, man. I mean, you know, because if you think about it, ISIS, Al Qaeda, all these other groups, Al Qaeda, really, yeah, they are bastard childs of the failed foreign policy of the Bush administration. So the Bushes is the real forefathers of all of these groups that they created. Didn't they used know? to uh, hang out in Compton? Yeah, they lived in Compton. You can check it out. The Bush family, they might still own property there. And Spot in Compton, California, called Richmond Farms. Yeah. They used to have a dope house there. You didn't know that? No, I didn't it's, know that. It's public yeah. knowledge. Public knowledge. Oh, it's public knowledge? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can look it up. Research it. The Bush family. They got roots in Compton. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> I'm just saying, man. I mean, it don't like have I nothing to do with what I was talking about. I'm just, exactly. I'm just, you know, you just saying throw what, shit in yeah. the jack. You, you know, yeah. I, I throw some yeah, shit in there. Just throw the shit in because and eject a lot of people don't purpose. know, and y'all need to know where these people is from. You just, you, they put on a suit and tie, be in the White House. You think they just uh, appeared out the sky, and they just like me and you. And they come from Compton. They come from Kevin Cosner is from Compton. Hell yeah, the white boy Kevin, the actor, he's from Compton. The bodyguard oh, really? himself. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. The bodyguard. I know the himself. comedian Paul Rodriguez is from Compton. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. See, the game now is from you know. Compton. The, the game is from Compton. No, he's from Bompton. From Bompton? Yeah. There you go with that gang banging shit. Yeah, the game is really from Bear Flower, man. That nigga ain't from Compton. Okay. Man. All right. Well, I, you know. <laughs> I'm from the south side of Chicago, so that's. You all I really know. from there? Yes, sir. Yeah. All day long. That's what's up. You know. That's but, crazy. But man. um, yeah, but I think you know. Like you were saying, for I think I, um, our judicial system is really fucked up. Yeah, and, and, I mean, and because the home abroad. Yeah. It's not, you know, you can't compare apple to oranges, but look what happened to this kid, this white kid that was a former St. Louis baseball, uh, Cardinal baseball executive. What happened to him? He got four years in federal prison. What'd he do? He hacked into a computer and stole personal data from the Houston Astros. So... They could look, he could look at their scouting potential and prospects that they were uh, Houston Astros potential draft so, picks. So, so, so what's wrong with that? He got caught. Yeah, but I'm saying, but look, you got four officers so far. Three of them was uh, acquitted and one mistrial in the death of Freddie Gray. So, but, I mean, it's just the judicial system is all fucked up. Well, you got to understand. You're talking about not the brother that they uh, arrested and put in the back yeah, of that van? Yeah. yeah. So six officers were indicted. Uh, three of them so far um, have been acquitted. One has a mistrial, and then you have two to go. So, so this a lesser saying, of a lesser shit, charge. All this shit ain't gonna go perfect, you know. Some people gonna fall I mean, between the cracks. Okay. Look at the people that's in the penitentiary and and, and who are really innocent that didn't even do shit, but they still in there uh, uh, eating soups and making spreads. You know what I'm saying? So, so what can you so do? So that's Somebody the whole gonna, thing why people are just tired of the system work. Because yeah. just like I said, you know, the, uh, is acting the, the, out the domestic policy of the uh, decision makers in this country is terrible. And, you know, to me, it's the same old song. I don't care uh, Hillary Clinton, whoever's voting. It's the same old song to give the people false hope. And when they get in office and the situation get in, worse. They don't do you know? shit for you. And I think a lot of people is sick of that. And this is what's really, you know, keeping Donald Trump alive because he is not a politician and he represent not the non-establishment. So he got a lot of support and power from all kind of different people from that aspect. But it's the same thing. The only people that can save America are the people itself. We can't no longer put our trust in a damn politician. I mean, we got to start from the grassroots neighbor. So start, you think we're going to have a coup like they did over in Turkey Friday? Well, I mean, they might because uh, the military uh, uh, took, yeah, uh, yeah. A coup? They declared martial law. The military took tried over to everything. Over. The well, military. no, it was, it was a failed attempt, though. Yeah, uh, but, but the military tried to. tried to say, fuck the government, and they was going to do their own thing. Yeah, so they, uh, and it was funny because they president. You know, that motherfucker was FaceTiming. At the same time? No, he was FaceTiming the country. Uh -oh. He went to hide it, and he was FaceTiming everybody. He probably was looking yeah, for Yeah, but just like I said, all around the world, and America is no exception, people are tired of the decision makers who really put them in an oppressive situation. Right. Well, let's see. For and that's why I say motherfuckers want their block back. Now, now, I was reading one of the comments, of, and some people had thought that uh, you should be president. So if you if you was president, uh, what kind of shit would Farouk you Farouk should be president? Yeah, they said Farouk should be president. Oh, well, I clear up uh, a lot of heinous crimes in a matter of 48 hours. Such Death as? For everybody, huh? Yeah, well, I'm just going to start with the knowns. We, we deal with the unknowns when we get to it. Now, the knowns is this. If you are rapist, if you are pedophile... Right. Right. Child right. molester, yeah. All that. You out of here. <laughs> we ain't going to waste no damn money. All we need is five people to admit that you are the one and you're out of here. Okay? We not go... Uh, five uh, people? Yeah. Five people to honestly pass a lie detector to test so you know that they are right and we have a victim. This victim pointed you out to your ass is out of here. Now, what we, kind of... What kind of uh, uh, sentence like 
you gonna give them like how you, you just gonna hang them? You just gonna shoot them? I mean, what you gonna do? Oh, it'll be some. You gotta public. make. You gotta make. So you gotta sure make like examples out of people. Yeah, because we don't want no, the taxpayer. No, that's that's too old. old we don't. Fashion, we don't want the nothing. taxpayer to have to pay for it. For nothing. And I mean, come on, man. You know, this is a technical age. People got TVs and computers and cell phones. You know, plugged up. Your shit plugged up right now. Mm-hmm. That's more important than wasting that electricity on the, on the so nothing. How you gonna kill them then? Right. What tactic are you gonna use? Shoot them. I'm going to throw their ass over the Grand Canyon <laughs> without no parachute on. No, I take that back. I'm going to give them a parachute, but the parachute ain't going to work. <laughs> why, well, why go through all that? Because that parachute. No, we're going to film it on TV. Oh, okay. And okay. see how many hits they have? As a deterrent? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to pronounce the crime that they did, and then we're going to make them fly. That's what's up. Now, now, now the second order of business, what, what, what kind of change would you bring? Well, all you lazy ass people Uh-oh. that don't want to work, you take them off welfare. You always got yeah. Welfare is out of here. <laughs> welfare is fair wear no more. I will get rid of that. Cause see, that makes a lazy motherfucker feel comfortable at being lazy. You know, you got to get your ass out here and work for something. Whatever. Look, scriptures say that a man earns what off the sweat of his brow. Okay, so if you take welfare away, are you going to at least increase the minimum wage? No, I'm not. So you're gonna keep it at ten dollars. Keep it at ten dollars, okay? Now, I think you should now lower first of all, no. See, see, y'all don't understand. I'm gonna keep it the way it is. Why? Now, your your pay rate goes according to your willingness to learn how the business operates. See, because you got motherfuckers after three months, they get the stealing shit from you. So I'm gonna keep <laughs> your ass right here with this amount of money. And if your ass show me that you are a noble employee, you're willing to work honestly, and you're willing to learn and everything to run your bit the business, the better you get at learning how the business run, and the more that you show that then, you know that, then, then you get paid more. But then I'm I'm put, I'm positioning myself to take your job then. Well, hey, that's No, called, you're not going to never position yourself look, to take my job. Why? Everybody's replaceable. It's, it's a ranking system because I had one replaceable. Look, yeah. look and that's if you why have you billions, someone if you under have, you if you because have, you're replaceable. See, listen, listen. I'm only replaceable by who God will re- replace me with. Now, check this out. We're getting back to reality now, Jeff. Exactly. When you go to the military and boot camp, you are a maggot. You're nothing. You're a private. You work yourself up the rank. See, we got a sick-ass problem in this country wanting shit that we have not proven ourselves worthy to have. They want to just jump in a general. Yeah. Yeah. You got to work yourself I, yeah, up I understand the all of that. Look, but when, when you, you work... You play your, sports. You, you play but, sports, yeah, right? Right. And you I have a tryout, right? Right. Now, all, all the people that. That, all the people in the tryout, this bullshitting, fat, out of shape, ain't taking the shit seriously, the coach always got to talk out. to, that's what I'm talking about. Right. So everything is in that process right now. Right. Okay? So, but the, if you train as somebody, like you said, you can't keep a person... At ten dollars, he, he said he wasn't gonna keep him there if he started learning how the business go. I had a boy worked at McDonald's. He used to come home and come by the uh, he's, on his way home. He stopped by our barber shop and, and bring like a ninety piece of McNuggets. They don't sell a ninety piece at McDonald's, so he was taking uh, nuggets from McDonald's every week. He didn't work there but for three months because he started stealing goddamn nuggets. And he was bad for this. So if you stealing from your job, that means you don't even really care about right. customer service. You're so not up. only are you taking Taken away from the business by stealing it, you are warding off for making customers feel uncomfortable being in here. Yeah, because he's stuck at ten dollars an hour. No, that's not because of that. He it's was because only working there it's for three because months. he don't want to learn no work ethics. Okay, you get two people to start off on the same level, right? And, and one is always going to out hustle the other. Okay, thank you. No, go, not not only that are they going to out hustle them when they are quicker to listen and follow instructions and, learn, and the guideline, yeah. then they work their way up the pay scale. You can't work your way up the pay scale because I you've understand. been at Look, if you've been flipping burgers for 10 damn years, wake up. <laughs> if you've been flipping burgers for 10 damn years, that means you are not trying to induce your mind with any type of skill level. After 10 years, to, you should own a McDonald's. Thank you. Okay. So, to, 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 to 
to pop up your pay level. See, if your pay level is low and you don't want to learn nothing because you're lazy-minded, you can work there for 30 years. I'm going to keep your black ass at six thirty-five dollars an hour. Wow, Period. below. That's the or well either, below. Or, 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 or either you can sell oranges on the freeway right. or go collect cans because that's right. what the world is coming to. See, we got bad customer service in all areas of life. Even oh, I agree get, with that. If, even, even when people pass in sensitive information, they don't care because they take what they do for granted. You know? Now, if you ain't doing shit and in three months they give you a raise, you gonna do less than shit. <laughs> Not true. Not shit. True. Not true. Man, you got see, too I you got too many people time. out here, Jeff, that ain't from the generation where you have to get out here and earn and also, what you I gonna mean, get. I agree with that because I'm getting my son, I'm preparing him for that. Yeah. I'm giving him it's my hustle many, traits. Too many lazy people. He got a job yet? He been looking for some jobs? No, nah, because he in school right now, oh, so okay. I give him that pass on that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm 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 providing for him because he is doing something constructive and he's working towards a goal. That's what's up. So I mean, so he gets a pass on that. Me and his nah, because, mom, because we came together young, on that man, but and said you we have to instill that into the youth, man, because that's what's but even though still though. I try to tell him on the side, though, you still can get a job, though. Yeah, I, I've been seeing you still get a job and but go to school. It's all about time management. You don't have to you. sleep. But eight don't to look at it as a job, uh, as a career. Look at a job as a lunch pad into your career. Exactly. Get you a job and go to school. A lot of young people don't want to go to school, and this is they don't understand. At what age did you start work? I mean, actually start hustling. I started hustling. Me and my sister had a, a lemonade stand when I was seven years old. I started at six. Because yeah. when my daddy came in, what my father used to do, because he sold insurance and he worked on the railroad, we, <coughs> you know, we asked him for some money because was, it was during Christmas um, break. And he always used to let us count his money. So what was, you, what was you doing like to get your money? My father took me and my two brothers to the window and he opened the curtain and he said, I can, I can buy these gym shoes for you. But he said, but it's easier if y'all get out there and y'all make y'all own money. And he opened the windows and it was snowing crazy. And he said, what do you see when y'all look out that window? And we like, dad, it's snowing like a motherfucker. You know, I said that to myself. And he's like, nah, when I look at that window, I see money. And we like, where? He said, I see $10 here. I see $10 there. I see $10 across the street. I see $10 there. And this shit hit me at six. So what I went and did, got our shovel, because we had the little rock salt ice. Mm-hmm. I want to shovel the lit in the, um, all the neighbors' driveway and they walkway. Right. It took me four hours to do like the whole fucking block. Right. But I never remember. And you got my paid. paid. I got paid that day three hundred and twenty dollars at and six, six years, years old. old. Yes. Man, look, it's I've been it, hustling and that. It's a young in my sister. Yeah. A young sister at Whole Foods. <clears throat> picked up her lemonade. This uh, sister is 11 years old. A right. million, millionaire and the CEO of her own I know. I, I read business. about her, yeah. Okay, so my point is you have to be industrious, okay? A lot of us looking for handouts, and we don't want much of shit. All we want is some damn Jordans, you know. Uh, That's why I was saying. The That's new what we talked about game. it early. A motherfucker would rather sit in a line for five days. It was this shoe Plus palace. Jordan. It was a shoe palace that opened in my neighborhood. Yeah. And there's a brother manager, and he was hey he he literally had to stand out on the sidewalk and he was tearing off applications to young blacks walking by. And it was like, yo man, we hiring, we hiring. It was like, I'm not interested. But they were standing but in the, the line. These came out. The Yeezys was coming out in two weeks. Motherfuckers was sitting in that line six, seven hundred deep for two weeks. And I'm like, what the fuck? Camping. Yes. Camping out. Yeah. But they I, that, do that, that shit for some Yeezys. But they won't spend, and spend 15 money. damn minutes filling out an application, application for a job. Right. Well, that's the thing right there. But they'll the, try to beg for me. And when I say no, they'll try to rob me. And that's when they go get their ass See, with. a lot of these young cats, they'll think it's too risky to uh, try to go out there. Well, everybody's looking for this job. I don't want to take that risk. But that's what it's about. You know, you got to take risks and prosper. Well, also, that's what's going on. Well, also, you know, like when I go to Chicago, like I'm going in a couple of weeks, when I do my little mini basketball, um, camp for you play, free. You play with a mini basketball? No, it's just a mini basketball oh. camp, you know, and it's for free for the neighborhood kids. It's like you see these kids, they hustling. Motherfuckers is hustling. Like last summer, you know, I was like, yo, because one of my homies, he just opened another McDonald's. He has four in Chicago. And he came and he's like, yo, we hiring. And two young twin brothers, good looking kids. The motherfuckers was like, yo, man, they went in their drawers 
and they pulled out a knot because they out there slanging. And he like, man, I ain't working for no motherfucking ten dollars an hour. I ain't doing that. See, it's like I'm not doing that. He that, said, this here is a whole month. Where he gonna get yeah, shot. But before, see, you know, that's but, the point that I'm trying to make. They 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 don't know and they don't really uh, understand the value of a hard earned dollar. That is the money that you appreciate. Money that you get by ill means come fast and then go fast. All money ain't good money. Because you, you don't really respect those dollars because you didn't have to put forth no effort to make it. Right. So that's why you could be at a club making it rain on it and stuff like that. When you work hard for your money and you earn it, you watch what you do with your money and manage it, like buy exactly. property. You, you buy care for property. How you spend it. Yeah, you buy property and things like that. You invest it to your family, right. like your son or daughter might need braces or something like that. You don't go out there and buy a bunch of damn uh, rims uh, and tires and shit like that for a car and blow your money in the strip club. Because, see, for all those that's going with that slogan, it ain't tricking if you got it, <laughs> ask MC Hammer if it was tricking when he had it. I mean, but you know, you always, you know, we always try to ask you know, MC Hammer. But we, you know, we we always want to be ghetto rich and showcase yeah, yeah, what nigga I got. Rich. Yeah, nigga rich. I got more than you. But you know, you don't see Bill Gates up in the motherfucking club making it rain. Bill Gates drive a Honda. Exactly. You don't see him up in the club making it rain. You got an eighty thousand know? dollar car living in your mama garage in exactly. the jungle. Yeah, playing PlayStation. Exactly. Playing PlayStation. And you don't sleep at night because your damn alarm going off. You think it's somebody trying to steal your car. Your damn uh, car note costs more than your mama's Section 8 rent. Exactly. You got your priorities fucked up, brother. Okay? <laughs> if you were smart, you'd get your damn mama up out of the damn jungles, man. Buy you some property, man. That's the best thing to invest your money in. And I'll tell you this story. This is something that I noticed. I saw this uh, lady. She was an elderly lady, maybe in her 70s. And she was in the little electric wheelchair, and I I had helped her because her, her wheelchair had ran out of the little juice, and so she was like, I live up the street, so I said I'll push her up the street. First right. of all, I want to say them damn things is heavier than the motherfucker. They heavier I than, know. to push than a regular wheelchair. So I helped her up there, and her son was in there. You didn't get Pokemon to help you? Nah, cause you know I wasn't playing the game at that time, but her son had opened the door. Like, where was this motherfucker at the whole wow. day? You know. The house looked like hoarders and everything. She ain't and ate all day. Ain't ate all day. This is a grown motherfucker grown neglecting his grandma. Man, it's a whole yeah. lot of them motherfuckers out there. Man, it they is. Take they they see, take their grandmama's check and all of that I, shit. They get through it. over that damn cliff of the Grand Canyon, too. Man. They got you to, gotta go to get rid of people like that. You got to learn how to take care of the people that took care of your ass. I done seen them. If in, it ain't for your grandmama check and her house, nigga, you'll be homeless. I done seen them in... Uh, Food for less, the, the uh, handicapped mother in there getting the groceries. This nigga want to ask for a beer and shit. You know what I'm saying? Pay for my 40 ounce. Uh, he can get the canyon too. But this is what I'm saying. Yeah. We, we got to start policing uh, the whole. The I like whole, the way you threw that I, in. They, they, they get the canyon they get the too. the damn canyon. And, and, and that's, that's, what, that's what's up, man. So, you know, police each other, police ourselves, and police. Uh, as many people as you can yeah, stop, when you see them fucking up. Stop because, glorifying the bullshit, yeah. you know. Some niggas selling dope in the uh, community, we glorify that. But a young brother get a scholarship to go to college, oh, well, you want to call him a square-ass nigga or a weirdo. Hey, this that, is what we, we should two, promote. We got two minutes, so we're, we're going. We're, we'll let the square-ass motherfucker that you call square-ass push your sorry ass into the exactly. canyon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my weekend was good. Um, I had a great show. Mm -hmm. Rocked the crib. Uh, Told the house up at the J-Spot Sunday with Earthquake. Great, uh, great, great. Thank that brother for allowing me to host and open up for him. Right, right. Um, it was Shout a out to Earthquake. Yeah, it was a beautiful show, man. So I uh, did my thing and um, had a great conversation with him afterwards. So it was beautiful. So I got some more stuff coming up. I'm going to let y'all know. So what you got going on? Well, we like I said, we got the uh, the big show coming up on July 29th at the Barbara Morrison this Performing Friday. Arts. Uh, the 29th. Uh, at the, I'll be there. At the Barbara Morrison uh, Performing Arts Theater. At 4305 uh, Degna Boulevard. And uh, Farouk's going to be on the show. Jeff's going to be on the show. And uh, we're going to have a lot of laughs. And we want to thank everybody for coming out to the uh, very important show that's going to be on the 29th. Because it's so important because laughter is so important. And we need it now, yo, more than everything. We need it now. Yeah, it's we time for to, some laughs. We need to yeah. start healing, yo. Yeah, less bullets, more laughs. Yeah, and... Uh, you sorry niggas, get off your ass, get a job. <laughs> and for you women out here... Quit having babies by these sorry-ass niggas. 
Oh, you Let can it get, go. You could get the canyon too. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Let's help one another, uplift one another, leave the bums alone. That's thank, it. So thank y'all for coming uh, out and uh, looking at another exciting episode of the Mad Marb Comedy Lounge Live with Jeff Arnold and Farouk. Peace to the world. Both Stay safe. Yeah. Follow the protocol if you get pulled over. <laughs>